Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel and if you're new, welcome. My name is Zoe, but most people know me on here in Instagram as ZA Reptiles. And today I'm going to be sharing with you five tips for building enclosures, building backgrounds, you know, custom making a reptile enclosure. Here are five tips that I learned the hard way. Tip number one is to avoid built-in hides, unless it's one where you can easily access your animal. Now this is a big one for me being an educator because there have been times I've gone to get an animal and you know when I'm building backgrounds I'm making like hides out of cork bark, they're like in the background and I think it's so cool and naturalistic and then it's time for me to do a program and I need to get that animal and that animal's in that hide built into the background and there's nothing that I can do. So even if you're not an educator, you know, if you want to be able to access your animal or if there's an emergency and you need to remove your animal from its enclosure, that can be very hard to do with built-in hides unless it's something where you can reach your hand in and you're confident in reaching your hand in to grab your animal. I, I don't like doing that. <laughs> You can still make really awesome natural hides without putting them into the background where they cannot be removed. Even if you have a cork bark tube that your animal can hide in and you can't necessarily reach and pull it out, you can take that cork bark tube out and put it in like a, a tub or something like a travel container if you needed to remove your animal. Number two is to pot your plants before putting them into your enclosure. So I do this with my burrowing species and kind of my bigger, more hardy species, um, or like my very active species that would absolutely knock plants over. So it just gives my plants a better chance at life. So like I have a Pactos in Kalua, my ball pythons enclosure, and one in Cusco, my blue tongue skinks enclosure. And did I pot that one? I don't think I potted that one. But those two are potted because they're very heavy bodied animals. So they're still alive. <laughs> I also recently potted the snake plant in my corn snake enclosure um, to kind of keep them together. <laughs> and then in my Chinese water dragon enclosure back here, I have all the plants potted. And then I bury the pots into the soil. So I always have people ask me questions about like, how do you put plants in like with your snakes? That's how I keep them in a pot. <laughs> and then I put the pot into the dirt. It just gives it a better chance of life. Number three, this is along the lines of background. I have learned, I have tried many different ways of doing backgrounds. Dry lock is superior. I have tried grout. I have done the silicone and dirt. Dry lock is the only way that I will go now. With that being said, you can still do a layer of dry lock first and then silicone and dirt, but my thing with silicone and dirt is it falls off over time. Most of my enclosures are silicone and dirt and they look like crap now. Dry lock over spray foam just looks very rocky and natural and you can mix in colors to make it look however you want, make it look very natural, highlights, low lights. And like I said, you can do the silicone and dirt over top of it. So if dirt does fall off over time, you're not seeing the really ugly spray foam underneath. Now, I do like the looks of grout, say, in my leopard gecko enclosure, or in my hognose enclosure, but in, like, my bearded dragon enclosure, it's chipping, it doesn't really look as nice anymore. Um, it's kind of a pain in the butt, honestly, to use. And dry lock is just so much easier and quicker and it's been holding up much better than the grout has for my bigger lizards, or my bigger enclosures. So I'm like strictly a dry lock user now. Number four is if you are building an enclosure, plan what you need for holes. So plan for any wiring, any plugs, some lighting stuff. The wire is attached to the plug so you need to make sure that if you're installing inside you have enough room to fit the plug through or you have to do some uh, electrician work to detach it so you can fit the cord through. Um, those are just things to think about when you're building is how your cords are going to be situated. Also 
if you plan to use a um, like something like an automatic mister you need to be able to fit a hose in somewhere so like I want to set up a mister for Gusco my blue tongue skink but I didn't think about that ahead of time so there's nowhere for me to feed a hose through so when I move and have a house before I re set up his enclosure I am going to drill a hole for a hose to go through so that he can have an automatic mister. And number five, if you are building an enclosure, plan what you're going to do for substrate and how much depth you want so that you can plan your substrate barrier accordingly. So I followed blueprint plans for my 4x2x2s over here, um, but there was some extra wood they were just going to have us cut off and throw away and I said, well, why don't we make the substrate, like the bottom part, taller so that I can make the substrate deeper because I knew I wanted to go bioactive and have live plants. So that's what we did. So these are all just things you have to think ahead if you're building um, so you can plan your cuts and whatnot. And that was something I didn't really think about when I did my tub conversions last year. Um, for example, for Kalua, my ball python, and Calypso, my rainbow boa, I wanted a very wide door and viewing window and didn't really think about the substrate depth. And then there wasn't really much room for a substrate <laughs> for it to be like deep and planted. So yes, yeah, so definitely think about how deep you want your substrate and like if you want live plants and everything, think about that ahead of time. Okay, so those are five building tips that I learned the hard way. Hopefully these help you guys in the future or near future. If you have more building tips that I didn't mention, leave them in the comments below to help everybody out. And as always, thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you for the next video. Bye!